In this video, we are going to be reviewing the Van Goa VGD611. <laughs> what a loser, eh? <laughs> okay. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is unbox this. Now, it came in a larger box, and this little guy was inside. Um, that was just for protection. But um, this is nicely packaged. This is not shaking, nothing like that. Let's see if we can open it up. Got this little dinky knife here. Holy crow. I don't think that's gonna work, guys. I think we need something bigger for this. Oh, okay, here we go. That'll do the trick. So as soon as we open it up, we see we have tons of packaging in here. So we open this up. Okay, and we pull this keyboard out. Get the side protection covers off. Look at this. This is a nice little package here. This is quite light. So this is actually 7.8 pounds or three and a half kilograms. Very, very light. Nice for traveling. Still feels sturdy though. So let's open it up and see what's inside. Ooh. So we got a nice white keyboard here. 61 keys, so it's not a full-size keyboard, but this could be an ideal length if you're traveling and you just need something to practice one hand at a time, for example. So we got our nifty uh, carrying case, very handy for when you're traveling. Mmm, the nice smell of plastic. I love it. So let's pull this guy out. Now that is a pretty package. Nice and sleek, fairly thin. We're about four centimeters thick on the back side here. Very thin sidewalls. I love how simple it is. Okay, next thing is to take off this protective tape. So this keyboard has a built-in battery. It's fully rechargeable. It's got a 1750 milliamp hour battery inside and it takes four hours to charge it up and it'll play for 12 hours. So now for volume, in terms of how loud and soft we're playing, we've got a volume button here. Oh wow, that's actually very loud. Response here, uh, volume minus. Oh, that's pretty neat. So that volume response sound will actually come down as the volume is coming down. So we're fully muted here. A little bit louder. So I hit it twice. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 19, 20. I think we're about max. Oh, we're getting a little glitchiness here. Turn it down. All right, so that's something we'll have to be careful of. We don't want to max out those speakers. Now for fast playing, this seems to be working out very, very well. Let's try to plug in some headphones and see how that works here. So we've got our headphone jack here. Plug that in. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's very, very loud. So I've got to turn that way down. Now I went all the way down and I went one step higher and that's still pretty loud. So when you're playing around with the headphones, 
you don't have much of a range there. You can't have it quiet. It, it's actually quite, quite intense on the ears when using the headphone jack. Next, we have a sustain pedal. So let's plug that in and see how that works. So we locate the sus port here. Oh, what did I push? Oh, not what I want to do just yet. Okay, let's get rid of all that. Start stop button is what I hit there. Okay, so we have our sustain pedal plugged in. Let's turn up that volume. So the one thing that um, a pianist will look for when using a pedal is being able to half pedal. You don't want just on or off all the time. Sometimes you want to have a dynamic range with your, your pedaling. All right, so now I just didn't have it plugged in properly. So you can actually have a little bit of control with the pedaling, which is nice. So that would be kind of a half pedal. And then if we do full pedal, you get a very washy, watery type of tone. So this is a pretty cool pedal. You have a little bit of control when using this. In terms of speakers, we have speakers on either side. So that gives us a bit of a stereo sound, if you will. keys have a nice texture to them. So the black keys have this kind of a bumpy feel, whereas the white keys are glossy and a little bit slippery. I do like some of the higher end digital keyboards. They use this kind of ivorite feel um, just to replicate what ivory would actually feel like. Um, and you get a little bit more grip, more texture on the keys. Whereas these ones are just your standard slippery keys. However, they feel quite nice. Okay, let's check out some of the features of this keyboard. So we're going to go through some of these buttons here. So the first one is the chord button. What we want to do, according to the manual here, is when playing rhythm, so there is a rhythm button. Turn up the volume there a little bit. All right, so what I did is uh, approximately middle C here, I went down to F sharp below middle C. From F sharp down is where you end up having a repeated chord playing for you. So if you just want to focus on playing a melody, then you simply play that one key. So I hit an F. So that's a pretty nice feature. If you just want to focus on playing melodies and little exercises, It'll actually make your technical practice more fun because you can get a rhythm going with some accompaniment and you can practice your technique. So you can change the different uh, rhythms that you have here. I'll hit a C. Now there are 128 different rhythms that you can play with this keyboard. Tons of fun you can have here. So what I'm gonna do is hit the stop start button. Okay, let's see what we have next. So the next button is the okay on. Okay, so we press the okay on button.
So right now we're in the first demo song. We're playing for Elise. Now the cool thing is here, you can play one single key on this piano and you're going to play the entire melody. So if you just want to work on your rhythm, for example, and you can work on your rhythm that way. So that's a really cool teaching tool. Now you do need to know the melody, all right? So if you're learning how to sight read music and one of these demo songs happens to be in there, then you can actually practice learning the rhythm of that melody without actually having to play all of the keys. So there are 15 different demo songs that you can do this with. So you can learn those 15, practice your rhythm, and just play one key to master that. Instead of, I mean, a lot of teachers will have their students clap through the, the rhythm so that they know exactly what it sounds like, but this is actually a little bit more fun. The next button on this keyboard is the metronome button. So what I found with the metronome is when you press that metronome button over and over, you can actually get different beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have two beats again, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we have the different types of rhythms, which is great. It goes up to six. That's really all you need. When you have compound time of nine or 12, you can mess around with uh, using the, the three beats. So the next button here is the record function. So when we press that record function, as soon as we start playing, It should record, and then what we will do is play. All right, you can hear my messy playing there, perfect. So now we move on to the next function. Now to have 700 songs that you can record on here is, is unbelievable, that's quite a bit. I don't think anybody can keep track, but if you are a young person and you just want to doodle and record your little concoctions, some of your cool pieces that you've made up, then this is a great keyboard for that. So the next function we're going to play with is the drum kit. There is a drum kit button here. Oh, I like that one. That's going to be annoying. So there are 61 different percussion sounds. There are 61 keys on this keyboard. That makes sense. Now they're all listed in the manual. There is a whole chart here with the different percussions. You just have to figure out what all the pictures mean. So I'm gonna plug this into my laptop and I'm gonna see if I can get this to make notes right on my note writing software. Okay, so in my Finale software, I go under MIDI setup and I find the device, MIDI 11 2.0. I'll click on that, I'll click OK. And now I'm going to choose a note length. So I just choose quarter notes here, 4-4 four, four time. So I'm able to play on the keyboard and it's typing out the notes for me. Now, if I want to record with specific note lengths, I'm going to have to do uh, the playback function here. Okay, so now I have the hyperscribe function on my note writing software, and this is recording, it's giving me a beat, so I can go one, two, three, four, and five, six, So you can see that it's fairly accurate. There are a few little glitches. You'll have to go in there and fix that. But for the most part, for the most part, it's doing a very good job. And obviously the key is not correct. You'll have to adjust all of that before you're going to play and the tempo. But having music writing software like this that has this hyperscribe function is pretty cool. 
Now I have a program on the computer called Synthesia, and this is where you have those falling bars while you're playing the keys, or reverse, when you're playing the keys, the bars will go up. And we just need to tap on MIDI, the MIDI device that we have here, the MIDI 11 2.0. So I'm going to say use this device, and then I'm going to the free play function, and it doesn't work. Output. Oh, music input. Use this device. Go back to free play. And now we have a response on our keyboard. Oh. Little bit of glitching, so it seems like there's a lot going on for this keyboard right now. However, even though the sound is glitchy with the speakers, we're still getting a response on the computer. Now, if we want to play an actual song on here, one of the last tutorials I did is the kid is hot tonight. And let's play that one and see if we can follow along. Where are we? Oh, we're here. Okay, this is embarrassing. <laughs> I can't even do my own tutorial. So I'll tell you something, as a classically trained musician, to be following these bars is actually, um, it feels a little inefficient. Um, having the notes, since I've been trained to read notes for many, many years, way easier. So this keyboard has Bluetooth app functions. So we can actually connect this to our cell phones, iPhone, Android. We can use this while playing with GarageBand and uh, perfect piano and piano bar as well. So the QR code wasn't uh, functioning properly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna type PO piano right into the Play Store and that app comes up. So I see it here, I'm going to install. So we need to turn on the Bluetooth function of our phone when we do this. Okay, now we can open, agree and continue, I hope. Okay, it's loading. What do we have here? When I allowed it to use the device's location, we have this MIDI here. So I'm going to connect via Bluetooth. Confirmed. Connecting. Finished. Okay, now we're gonna go back to happy birthday. Start play. All right, so we have certain levels that we can unlock here. I'm gonna play the first one. Okay, so now we are getting a response from the keyboard to the phone app. So you can actually follow this. Now I just picked a random octave here. I wonder if I can change that octave and it'll still work. Okay, so it's giving me an X with a red. So I was on the wrong key in the wrong octave. So this is a really cool feature because it's making you repeat and practice three times. And if you don't get it right, it doesn't move on. So we have this really cool app here that is great for learning and you get an immediate response. So this has been my review of the Van Goa VGD611 keyboard. 61 key keyboard, we have semi-weighted keys, they're touch sensitive. Uh, full size keys and full depth of travel. 
For myself, as a classically trained pianist, um, I would not be satisfied with the size of this keyboard. I do like to have a full size 88 keys because the pieces that I like to work on generally utilize the entire range. Uh, maybe not for all pieces, but for most, the most part they do, and I want to have that versatility. However, for someone who is just composing, I think this is a great keyboard. If you are getting into producing electronic music and you just want to play some chords, you want to get that feedback while you're practicing before you're actually creating your tracks, and then hook this up to your actual uh, laptop and your DAW, this would be a great keyboard to be using for that. My favorite thing about this keyboard is just how sleek it is. It is such a nice package. Very solid, actually. There's no rattling. We don't get that clicking sound that we were getting with some of the other keyboards that uh, we have reviewed. Very solid package, very nice and sleek. I like the fact that all the buttons are in a really small, confined area here. It doesn't produce too much visual noise for us. The second thing is I love just how solid the keys feel and the fact that they are the official size. This is what you're going to get when you buy a full acoustic piano. You're going to get this size of key and you're going to get that depth of play. So those are great, I do love those. The downsides, the speakers are pretty mediocre, but for all of these fairly inexpensive keyboards that we have reviewed, the sound is less than ideal. However, you can connect this to your computer and then run that through to better speakers. You could most likely run this through your DAW and then some sort of VST to produce whatever types of high quality sounds you want. So if you are a little bit more tech savvy and you like to play with a music software, then this keyboard should be more than ideal. And if you have your studio set up, you wanna minimize your footprint on your desk, I think a 61 key keyboard is more than fine. For an absolute beginner, I definitely give this a thumbs up. This is a great keyboard for learning. The price point is right on the money. And the fact that it has built-in batteries is great because let's say you're just learning how to play the piano and you're going on a vacation for a week, you still wanna practice, this would be great to be taking on the road. You get a handy carrying case here with it, so you can just throw that in. Nice and easy. Close it up, zip it up. You have a pocket here for all of your cables, your pedal. And off you go. So overall, this is a really cool beginner keyboard. Uh, definitely nice solid package. And for those advanced musicians who are producing, definitely recommend this. I will provide my affiliate link below where you can purchase your own keyboard like this and support me in producing these cool reviews. Please make sure you're following me on Instagram. That's Piano Hooks Official. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel piano hooks. Leave a comment below. What do you think of this keyboard? Is this something that you would purchase for yourself? When we hit 300 likes, I am going to do a draw for this keyboard and ship it off to you. So please make sure you are following me on Instagram, you're subscribed, and let me know that you want this keyboard. And let me know your favorite features of this as well. And let me know what keyboard you want me to review next.